Hey guys, it's Tacho here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. So today, we got the Grand Hero Battle for the Flame Emperor. So a lot of people have been talking about this unit. It is the first free-to-play character that has a 178 BST. So that pretty much means if you free-to-play this unit and get him to plus 10 with your Heroic Grails, you can actually make this unit score just as high as a lot of the premium units like Surtur, Legendary Tiki, Fallen Tiki, Halloween Mur, and so on. So this is a really good unit for arena scoring purposes and it's a really big win that they gave this unit out for free. So let's quickly take a look at the base kit and also the stats. So Flame Emperor's got 50 HP, 40 attack, 25 speed, 37 defense, and 26 res which is pretty good, and this unit is free to play, so no IVs to speak of. And the base weapon is Guard Axe Plus, which is pretty solid. A lot of Axe units were running Hackle Lantern before this, because it causes minus one cooldown for the foe. The special attack is Ignis, which is going to do insane damage, based on how high this unit's defense is. And then in the A and B slot, we've got Bracing Stance 2 and Wary Fighter. So, not the worst options. Bracing Stance is, of course, going to be decent on the enemy phase by giving you some more defenses. And Wary Fighter can stop double attacks. But I feel like Wary Fighter has pretty much been phased out at this point. There's just way too many units running around that have null follow-up now. So, they can just Pac-Man your Wary Fighter and kill you on the initiation anyway. So, you probably don't want Wary Fighter anymore. But it is still a decent option for most of the other modes in the game, outside of Arena and Aether Raids. Okay, so talking about budget builds now, there's really so many different things you can do with this unit, it's ridiculous. I think Guard Axe is good enough to keep, and since he defaults with the Guard Axe, you may as well just keep it. So, we want the Res Refine, since his defense is already sky high, and giving some extra res is gonna help when you have to fight dragon units and mages. As for the assist, I like to use swap on my armored units. It helps them move an extra space by switching places with an ally. But of course, you can also run pivot, which lets them move even further and leapfrog off of your allies. It really just depends. I mean, there's so many different assist skills in the game. You could use reposition or smite or whatever you want. Just go with your favorite. For the special, I feel like Aether is a fine choice. It is free to play from a 3 or 4 star Krom. And Aether is very offensive and defense thanks to the heal. So I feel like that's good enough for a budget build. And in the A slot, you can keep Bracing Stance if you want, but there's just so many other options. Where do we even begin? So Fury 3 could work as well. Also, the Bond skills are not too shabby and they're all free to play. Good for a bait unit, of course. And there's also the brazen skills, like brazen attack and defense, which you can get from Ares. Or even brazen defense and res, which I think it was male Kana who came with that. I'll have to double check. But I am pretty sure that brazen defense and res is also free to play. So that could be a decent option. But since this is a budget build and bracing stance 2 is just good enough to get by, you can feel free to keep it. In the B slot, even though I did mention how Wary Fighter has kind of been phased out, it is still fine for most of the modes in the game, so you don't have to worry too much about changing it. It does also score 240 SP, so it's good enough. But if you really want to change Wary Fighter, you could go with something like Quick Repost or Vantage or something nice for the enemy phase. And in the C slot, we're just going to go with Ward Armor. It's pretty easy to get, and it's not too hard for free-to-play players to just set up a really quick armor cube. So, not too shabby. Also, there are other options, though. If you want, you can use Fortify or Hone Armor. You can also use the Drive skills. You could use the Wave skills. Like, th there's just way too many options. Also, Close Guard and Distant Guard, very nice, and they both became free-to-play. So, just pick whatever C slot you want. Building this guy in terms of a budget build is, it's like just give him whatever you want really because there's so many good options that'll work on him. But really, when we're talking about armored units, they really shine the most when we talk about high investment stuff. 
because a lot of the armor specific skills are just busted. And before we move on to those high investment builds, we will finish this build off with the close defense sacred seal. Really, you could just run whatever you want. I mean, there's also quick repost as a seal. There's also steady stance and warding stance. Just pick your favorite, really. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you what the best is because there's a lot of skills that do different things. And it is a budget build. So, okay, enough about that. Let's move on to some of the big boy builds now. Okay, so this is going to be the classic dual phase build, which can technically be free to play now if you use your divine codes on the blades and sacred stones path. But that's really going to be entirely up to you. The amount of divine codes it takes to complete a path is pretty steep, so I, I don't think I want to consider that free to play, even though you don't have to use orbs to get this build. So we've got Distant Counter, Bold Fighter, Armor March, and Quick Repost. This is the bread and butter armor unit build. Also with the Guard Axe, it's sort of like you have Special Fighter, where you can decrease the foe's special charge and also increase your own special charge with Bold Fighter. And in the ideal situation, this build can double attack on both phases. So it's pretty solid still, even to this day, and a lot of armored units can default to this build. Now, if you want to focus more on the enemy phase, there are two optional builds you can run. Now, on the Special Fighter build, we're free to use the Slaying Axe Plus, which is going to bring Aether down to a 4 hit. So, what's going to happen is the foe attacks, Flame Emperor, you get plus 2 Special Charge, and then you get Quick Repost, so your next two hits are going to be plus 2 Special Charge as well. And then on the final hit, you get Aether off, all in the same round of combat. So it's pretty good for damage and healing, and it's going to keep you in the game pretty well. Armor March and Distant Counter, of course, we're going to keep since it's an enemy phase build, and Armor March is just way too helpful on armored units. And for the other build, we have the Guard Axe, so that we can still reduce the foe's special charge while also having Vengeful Fighter to ramp our own special charge up. And we can run Distant Defense in the seal slot for this build, so he gains an extra 6 defense and res against ranged opponents. So, either of these builds are going to work just fine, it's just pick your favorite. I think, personally, I would go with the Special Fighter build, since the Quick Aethers are going to be very useful. But that's not to take anything away from the Vengeful Fighter build, as Distant Defense is going to make it a little more tanky in the long run. And finally, we have a focused player phase build. We're going to be running the Slaying Hammer on this one, so he can be effective against armored units, which you're going to be seeing a lot of if you plus 10 this guy and you put him on your arena core. So Slaying Hammer is going to work wonders in arena play. We've also got Gale Force on this build, so he can take two actions in a turn. Distant Counter, of course, we can keep so that he can still attack enemies on the enemy phase. And Bold Fighter is going to allow you to quickly ramp into Gale Force and take that second action a turn, while also destroying all of the enemy armored units thanks to having effective against armors. And Armor March is just going to be even better on this particular build than all the other ones, because moving two spaces a turn and ignoring obstacles like forest tiles and such is going to be really good on a Gale Force build like this. And for the Sacred Seal, we've got Sturdy Blow 2, so you can just get that extra bit of attack and defense when you initiate combat. So overall, pretty good stuff. And the Flame Emperor is one of the better free-to-play units that we've gotten. Of course, having such a high score bracket for this unit is what makes him important and why a lot of people are looking to build him. So he's definitely a top-tier unit for a Grail project, and I would recommend investing in him if you have the resources to do it. So that's going to wrap us up for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this discussion on the Flame Emperor. And later tonight, we're actually going to be getting the Resplendent Ike update. So I'm planning to do a live stream later tonight, and we're going to just plus 10 Resplendent Ike. We're going to give him all the Dragon Flowers, and we're going to take him into some modes and have some fun. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you guys again in the live stream later tonight.